Super good, brother. All is well. All is well. We are back here. So can we can we give the Lord praise and honor in this Amen. house? Praise this is not Lord. a spectator time. It really is a time. Don't take it for granted because he we, we believe he is here in this house and he is worthy of our praise. Amen. We're going to sing happy birthday to someone special over there, to Junior, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Let's see. And, and the kids, Sister Kay, you're taking them back after the two specials. So let's worship. All right, we're going to sing happy birthday to Junior. Yeah. All right. You have that victory this morning? Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, this song, I am believing for complete victory for my sister. And I will settle for nothing less but God's very best. When we do our best, God does all the rest. And victory in Jesus is where it's all at.
victory of all is when you have victory in Jesus. Amen. wonderful church he's precious you believe tonight he's a precious savior hallelujah at him church
He loves you, church. He cares for you. about is what what's good for me the next step but who do we call when we get in trouble first person we call on is Lord Jesus he cares for us he cares for you so let's sing this song with open heart open mind and give it all to him this morning Someone to Yes, he does. Someone to like you made it to All your troubles like no other can do. He'll come down. Yeah. 
for you. You're dead. from the smallest thing to the largest thing that's in your life. He cares for every bit of it. Nothing is too small for God to care about. But nothing is too big that God can't handle it. God has everything in his hand. Exactly. All we got to do is go and take it. Amen. Amen. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. And you are that one who cares. Could you lift him up one more time in the house? In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name worthy of our praise. The name who has lifted us up. Where would we be without him? Oh, Lord, where would we be without you? But, Lord, thank you that you are here present in this place, in this place in our hearts. And that, Lord, when you're there, dear God, we believe that the miracle is there ready to come. And, dear God, I pray that you show yourself in each life here, each life on the internet that's watching, how real you are, Father God, how awesome you are to do the miracle to be done. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. You are so good. Yes, the you are. just one, the one who is able when we can do nothing. Thank you for it, Lord, and we give you the praise. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah is his name. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you so much, worship team. Thank you so much. I believe we have a special today. We have a special from a sister, and Woody's going to help out. Appreciate you, Sister Trace, and God bless you. I felt to do this song. I don't get up and usually sing unless I feel the Spirit of the Lord move on me. And um, uh, I... Uh, Almost I told Brother Woody, I said, Brother Woody, you, you picked this song out. And this is the one Brother Woody picked out. And uh, I'm not one too much to sing with a recording. I like a piano when I play. And I just feel like I can give my heart more to the Lord when I sing, when I do that. And um, But I almost wondered, too, if it was the Lord, too, that dealt with me to sing today. My friend called me I hadn't been friends with for over 30 years, and I hadn't talked to her in a long time. And it was good to hear from her. She called me back, to, and uh, she lives in Minnesota. And uh, she uh, gone through a lot. Um, her son had been uh, in an accident, and her husband had been going through a uh, a health trouble and she had really been a lot but over the years she's really been a strength for me um, and uh, I told her that I would say I was gonna sing a solo and I'd, I'd asked to sing the solo um, even uh, before she had called me this week and I'd been real worried and you know the Lord answers prayers I was praying that she would call me and um, and she did and we had a really long conversation on the phone and i enjoyed it and she's a a really good uh, christian and saint in the lord but i'm going to sing this song for y'all today and i hope you're blessed
Brother Woody, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tracy. These are Eastery songs. I tell you what, some people call them Eastery songs, but I tell you, it's always a good time to celebrate what he's done for us. Amen. And that's what the song I picked out today. Meanwhile in the garden, just listen to the words of this song. Early in the city of Jerusalem, roses were covered with dew. His friends had all come together, feeling afraid and confused. The past three days filled with sorrow, hours went off to they cried. The last time they gathered together was at a tomb with the Lord sealed inside. They spoke of the joys and the pleasures and the treasures he had brought to their soul. They spoke of the healings and the miracles that now seems such a long time ago they remembered the last time they saw him he was lying in a cold dark tomb and meanwhile in the garden at sunrise victory had shattered the gloom meanwhile in the garden the tomb that he laid in was empty at the first light of day and the only reminder of his presence were the grave clothes left where he lay 
Meanwhile in the garden two angels were waiting for Mary to tell her the news. And the only one left crying today is Satan defeated and bruised. Yes, the only one left crying today is Satan defeated and bruised. Meanwhile in the garden at sunrise, victory shattered the gloom. Hallelujah. He is risen, church. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Let's do that course one more time. Here we go. Meanwhile in the garden, the tomb that he lay was empty at the first light of day. And the only reminder of his presence were the grave clothes left where he lay. Meanwhile in the garden, two angels were waiting for Mary to tell her the news but the only one left crying today is Satan defeated and bruised yes the only one left crying today is Satan defeated and bruised meanwhile in the garden at sunrise Victory shattered the gloom. Hallelujah. He's risen, church. Hallelujah. He's alive and well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. I love you. Praise his name. He is so good in the house. Hallelujah. Could you stand with me if you would, please? He's a precious Lord and Savior, and carrying around in you is, is the love of the Lord. Can you share that with somebody real quick here before we go any further? I know the kids are heading on back. Show the love to somebody today. Got a lot of energy in this place. Let's show it on the, those that need it. And I want to say this to those on the Internet while they're sharing here. We love you, and Jesus loves you. He has something for you today where you are, even if you're by yourself. He has a fellowship ministry to give to you, and we love you today. When they're ready, a couple ushers could come and help with our tithes and offerings. For those out there, those in here, we have been gifted today with the very best, the very best that the Lord could give us. 
And I'm thankful today to be able to celebrate that with all of us. And one of the ways we do that is by giving of tithes and offerings as we have the ability to today. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, you are the author of life, the author of every good gift. And today we thank you. You don't change like the shifting shadows, but you honor your word. And your word says, as we give, you will give also, dear God. And we, that it would be a good measure pressed down. will come rolling into our laps, dear God. And those who are giving today, we ask, dear God, that you minister through them, dear God, the very blessing you would have. And also, Lord, that you use every bit of this for what you have planned in this, in this area and in this church community, Lord, for your will. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. God bless you as you give. The announcements for us, please. Isabel, we appreciate it. We always like to say this. Encourage folks, good things are coming up ahead of the church because we believe they are. They are coming. We've got some good special speakers coming up for us. Tonight, we hope you can make it back. Our brother Terry and sister Linda will be sharing with us. We hope you can also make it Wednesday night. Our brother Gary will be sharing with us. And so we look forward to that. Uh, we have also some different ones. Our brother Al is going to be sharing here very shortly. Looking forward to it. And also, we do have coming up Mother's Day is the next one. And we have our sister is going to be sharing that day. So we look forward to several coming up and some others as well. We do also have our discipleship reminded for May the 3rd, that Friday, and 7 o'clock. So that'll be finishing the book of Hebrews. Wonderful time coming. We also have the 400-mile sale. We're all going to set up out here the Friday and Saturday of that day. Uh, the amusement park. I'm talking to my brother back there, and we're thinking maybe around Memorial Day weekend is the best time for the finances. If you want to go on that trip and can or cannot make it, uh, we do need to know that as soon as you are able, if that the, probably the Saturday of that weekend, to see how that looks for those that want to go. Uh, we um, kind of state the policy of that in the past, and it's the same policy as the past, but if you are a regular uh, attender, part of the church, then we'll go ahead and pay for your ticket. But for those, uh, anybody's welcome to come, but if you're not a part of the church, you would need to be able to pay for that. So that's how we, we set that up, just so you know. We do have our VBS. We look forward to put those dates out as a reminder. Our brother and sister will be working on that, and God will give them something on that soon. So we're we're. Excited to, to see what God has for us ahead. And we have other things coming up as well. He is a good God. And may he be in all our activities, every program. And that's what we're talking about here this morning. So can we go into our scriptures? Can we go into the word of God? Dig into this book. Because it is a good book. And we're going all the way to the last book of the book today. Book of Revelation. This is on my heart today, and I'm going to actually pray right now before we get started here for us. Father God, this word is on my heart, and I believe today that you would say something where it needs to be said, because I know I can't. I can't communicate what needs to be said, but I pray that we take from your word and your scriptures today that first love, that we take from your word and your scriptures today how much that, Lord, you are coming after us. Reveal that through your word today. That, Lord, we might take it with us, dear God, and pursue you with all our hearts as we leave. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is on my heart. I'm going to share this. This is not in the scriptures I have, but this is, as they were singing this, this came to me. You remember Jesus was tempted when he was here on earth. He was tempted. Remember, he was a, a man, just like a person, just like we are. And he, he underwent temptations. And one of those temptations was that Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the earth in their splendor, all the beauty that was there. The devil showed that to the Lord. And remember, he's a man. He is Lord, but he is a man here. And he, he had those temptations. And I can imagine those, if you will, you can imagine all those temptations flashing before him. The riches of the kingdoms, all the gold and all the silver and all the land and possessions, the beauty. Uh, all the, the other temptations that, that, that a man could have, the power that could be there for him. And he said, no, I'm not taking any of that away from me, Satan, because it's all, I love my father more. I have that love in me that's bigger than any of that. And I, what I'm saying for us here is I believe sometimes the devil shows us those things, the different things, the distractions, if you will. The, Jesus called them also thorns that can choke out what God has for us. 
The devil will show us those thorns and say, hey, pull, pull you away. And you know what? A lot of folks do. They get pulled away because they don't have their first love. But I tell you what, that first love that Jesus had right there is something that's available to us too. Because when we have that first love, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at us, shows us, we're going to stand right there with him and we're going to hang on to him. And my, there were several directions that I had a heart to go today. You know, we've talked about Israel and it would be neat to look at some of the prophetic, but no, that wasn't the way to go today, see Mike. And we, a lot of people have been battling sickness in the church and we believe God gives victory and healing over that. It's true. Good for today, it seems like. I really have on my heart what's in Revelation chapter 2, and we're going there in just a moment. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. That this church, as it grows, the programs grow, the things grow, that we don't forget our first love. Because if that love gets lost, where are we going to be? We're going to be empty and dead. That's not God's will for us. That's not God's will. Because you see, He has that first love. Because when we have that first love with Him, we can hold up under anything, y'all. Anything that comes against us. We are victorious. So let me read this for us. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 5. You're welcome to stand if you would so desire. Revelation chapter 2 and beginning in verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things, says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Let me preach here for just a second. You know, he's walking with, among you right now. He's walking with you right now. He doesn't just wait till later. He's right here with you right now, walking among the churches, the Bible says. Somebody needs to hear that today. He is not a God just far away. I know your works your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Good stuff, good stuff. Verse 4, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And verse 5 says this, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Our Father, we thank you for your word, and we ask you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated if you like. So many things pull at us. And there's so many ways that we can react. We can be afraid. We can dig in and just work a little bit harder. We can get hard hearts. And I wanted to share this. This is in Matthew. If you could put those Matthew verses in Matthew 24 up there, please. So there's different ways that, that we are, if we're not careful, we'll end up reacting to the things that the enemy throws at us. And we know in these last days, it's going to be more things he's throwing at us. It's going to, get, it's going to be intense. But the Bible says this, and because lawlessness, lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Verse 13 says this, though. Verse 13 says this, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Shall be saved. He has called us to endure and to see that love continue on and never grow cold. And I, I want to encourage us. Christians, you as an individual Christian, can do many things for God. I believe this church, as a church that grows and, and sees the, the things that we do grow, we can do many things for God. Oh, but may we never, never forget our first love. The most important is that. And why is that? Why is that? Let's dig in here in this passage in Revelation for us here. Take a look for just a few moments today. You see, there's an old song, and I learned when I was really good, it'll go something like this. Oh, how I love Jesus, because... He first loved me. And in verse 1, Revelation 2 and verse 1, Jesus talks about how He is among the churches. He's among this church in Ephesus. He's among this church in Russellville today. He's with us. He holds the stars and walks among the churches, the Bible says. 
and Revelation, the, if you see the golden lampstands here, that was a standing for the church. That was what that meant. These churches in Ephesus uh, and the other churches that you'll see here were in a place today we call Turkey in Asia Minor right there, all in a big circle together. These churches were here. And he had an individual message for each church. And I believe that he wants to have that message for his church today. Not just those seven, but he has a message for Christian life today. And I really, not that this has happened for us, but it's so easy for any church to have that, where we do the things and we don't have the love. And so we see here the star, he holds the seven stars in his hand. There's debate about what that means. Uh, because if you go back into chapter 1, the stars stand for angelos, which means messengers. It could mean either angels or pastors. But it seems to be that he's talking here, if you look in this, he's actually talking about the human folks that are leading and working in the church. And my point is that those who step out in the church, those in this place, he is right here working among us, showing himself to be the God who is present, who is here. And so I said that to say this for us. Someone needs to hear that, that he is the God who is present with us and loved us first. Even though that we are not always much to look at. You know, a lot of us have been sick in the last time. You know, we're talk we know what we're talking about. We've been battling through that. Did you know he was with you in that? He didn't leave you when that was there. He is still with us now, too. At any point where we are coming, he is, he is reaching down to us. And uh, our brother shared recently on uh, Rocky Balboa. So I'll go, since he talked about Rocky Balboa, i got to take my turn, brother. So, <laughs> If you've seen the movie, if you had not seen the movie, forgive me. But he goes into the boxing fight, and he, he, the fight's over, and they're, they're wanting to talk to him about the fight. And at the end, he goes, Adrian! Anybody ever seen the movie? Adrian! Guess who he's calling for? He's calling for the one he loves. And I'm thankful that there's a parallel there, that Jesus has gone through the fight for us. And guess what? He's not looking for all the stuff on the side. He's calling out after us. He's calling out after us because he loves us that much. And so my, my point is to us with this, he leaves the other 99 to find me, to find us. He sought us through the cross. That's how we know that he did. And so we are encouraged that no matter where we are today, we can approach him boldly because he wants to love us. He want, a lot of people, we can lose that first love. We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. We can lose that love because we think, I've done too much. Even after I've been a Christian, I've done too much. I've, just, I've done, gone too far out. But I want to say this. He's looking for us today. He left those 99 that were doing okay. And he was looking for that one that wasn't. And if that one is us today, he loves us that much. And I remind us of that today. I remind us his love is real. And we, we have to hang on to that, that he loves. He's walking among the churches today. He's walking among the people today. Remember that. Verses 2 and 3, Jesus loves us more than the work. Than the work. This church, if you read through this and all the things we did in verses 2 and 3, you go through that. There's a healthy list there of stuff that they did good. They did good. They were doing a lot of work. They weren't tolerating evil. Everything they did was good and important. But if you remember back to a chapter that's very famous, 1 Corinthians 13, you can do all the work just right. You can give your body to be burned, it says. Go all the way. If you don't have love, what is it? There's nothing there. Nothing there. So I, I want to encourage us because any church that works should grow. Any work, the church should be more than it was at first. Any church, we should say, hey, we're not going to tolerate those things that we, the, the old way of life. That's the old way of life, amen? We put that behind us. All that needs to be. But here in this passage, it says here that we've got to actually be like, hey, I can't forget my first love. That's what he really wanted from them. He really wanted that church to have that passion. So what do we say that first love? We say that first love, I... I might have hoped my wife was back there in the back taking the kids, but we can. Do you remember the first? Do you remember the first love? It's the easiest parallel that we can have when you had that first love and, and that first that special someone. My wife was long distance, and she lived in Arizona for some time, and she would 
uh, she was doing her thing there, and I was here doing my thing here, and she would fly in from Arizona, and she would stay in the hotel, and it seemed like the car was on glide to go see her and pick her up to do our things that we were going to do because guess what? I was getting to see my love, right? I was getting to see somebody I cared about because, and we would do it, and we would eat at the restaurants or do the things that we did, but it was, it was just kind of, it was all wonderful because we were in love. You know, that we have that first love, and, and that the beauty of that is something that he's saying, hey, I'm just kind of reminding you here, you had a love for me, church in Ephesus. You had a love for me that was special. You couldn't wait to be with me. You couldn't wait to spend that time. But now it's more about the stuff. It's now more about, and we could call it religion because the way we define religion is doing the stuff, the thing, the practice, the acts of doing it, the things that we do. Should we do things? Absolutely. Absolutely we should do things. That's another sermon. But what ends up happening so, so many times, we do the things. We maybe even do a really good job at doing the things, and the Lord blesses that, and we think, this is great. Everything is fine. But we, realize, we don't realize what's happened. We're missing that love. And this is, anybody know a parallel? It happens in marriages too, right? Anybody know what we're talking about? This is not something that's just here, uh, and it, it has a good application there too. But for us today, we're, we're talking about how serious this is because the Lord Jesus, if you have a red letter Bible, this is all red letters. Jesus is saying this here. So you could look down and see, hey, this is serious stuff. The King of Kings says, hey, you better get this right, verse 5. Or you better get this right or I'm going to remove your lampstand from its place. I'm going to pull that blessing back from you. I'm going to pull that fire back from you. Our brother talked about that recently, that fire. Oh, he's going to pull it all back because guess what? We don't have that first love. And so even some other churches that were struggling in Revelation didn't get told what they got told because that love is just that important. It's that important how much that we can have. And so I do want to encourage us with just some things because it's very easy to be, hey, so much in love with Jesus, things are going great, and then suddenly we look and find ourselves, and he's far away, and we're like this church. It's very easy to have that happen, to just have things slip. Well, what happened here? Let's talk for just a moment about how that first love can slip just a little bit from us. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 22. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 22, the Bible says this, and it goes on because Jesus is talking a hero in a parable about uh, how some of the seed uh, doesn't produce. And then this was a specific type of seed in, in, in the parable that didn't. And it says this, whoop, he's coming right back to it, because there's some that falls among the path that doesn't produce, there's some that doesn't get a root and it doesn't produce, and then there's some here, it says, now the... Now, he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, he hears it, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful, unfruitful. I went with my dad and my brother. We would work in a garden there, and it was sunny, and it was hot, and if anybody's ever worked in a garden, it's hard work. It's hard work. You get that hoe, and you do what you got to do to get those weeds out. You have, to, you have to stay with it. And the funny thing is... Uh, if we don't stay, if it's not a constant thing, almost at some points, if it rains well enough, it's almost not like a daily thing that you're doing. Those weeds grow up really fast and they choke it out. They choke out the, the good stuff. They choke out that squash or cucumber or corn or whatever. It's like, why do I have to do this so much? Anybody ever been there? You got to weed it. There's, there's a point to that here. The weeds grow up really fast in our lives if we don't, if we don't watch. We're not careful. We're not tending that relationship that we have. There's a lot of block that can come to that. And one other thing I'll mention for us, I believe the Lord has a good work for this church, and I hope you can say amen to that. I hope you are confident the Lord has something good for Christian life that's going to grow bigger, and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. But what can end up happening is, as the work grows bigger, that it can become the love. Because we get blessed. when you do the work of God, you get blessed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You get blessed. It feels great. You know, you, you witness to that one in your family and they get saved. It feels great. You know what? That becomes the love instead of him, the work that we do. Does anybody kind of know what I'm saying? You get that kick out of that. And the relationship with the Lord that we have, sometimes relationships with, with people, because he is a person, Jesus is a person. We need to have a relationship with him, not just an idea. But relationships can be difficult. Anybody know what I'm saying? They can be, sometimes they can feel very... Um, 
challenging, and sometimes the Lord will push us a little bit, and we can kind of pull back away. I like my doing my work over here, doing whatever I do, and we and it's doing work for God, so God must be, I must be in love with Him because I'm doing this work. That's probably what this church in Ephesus thought. Does anybody know what I'm saying? I hope I'm connecting here with us because it's a challenge that you and I face that we have to look at, and it's preaching to me. If nobody else today, it preaches to me because it says to us, I've got to love Him even if it doesn't feel safe even if it doesn't there's an old man a fellow named c.s lewis that he wrote something if you're familiar with c.s lewis he wrote a book and it to explain what, what's happening in the book in this point is not right but he basically describes god like this the the character asks is god safe and he says no he's not safe but he's good he's good and it's good for us to know him and it doesn't feel safe sometimes it doesn't feel like it's exactly the best and easiest way to go. Many of us have been hurt in relationships, and it's very easy to work instead of relate. But he has called us to know him, not just his work, not just the blessings that he gives us. He has called us to know him. And so that's, I believe, what was happening in this church. And it ended up becoming a loveless church. And oh, I, I just encourage us. You may remember a story of in the scriptures about Mary and Martha. Anybody remember that story? Sometimes we just got to spend a little time at Jesus' feet like Mary did. We got to spend a little time, even though the work is good and we, we need to do the work and no one's saying differently. But if it comes down to the work or comes down to that, may we love him. May we come in and say, I'm going to love him no matter what. Even if sometimes I have to say no to some of the work. Do you know it's okay to say no sometimes? Anybody know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to say no, that no, this is going to take too much time and I've got to, I've got to love, love the Lord. This is time that I have with Him. This is time that I have. And, and is it easy? No, if it was easy, then everybody would do it, right? But He's called us to love Him. He's called us to find that way to say, hey, I'm going to seek after Him like, like nobody's business. Just like the, if you read in the song of Solomon how, how the bride and the groom are seeking after each other. That's what He's called us to have. That seeking out after each other. We're running after each other to find each other. And that's what He's called us to. And as hard as it is, it's good stuff. It's good stuff and so much rewarding than anything else. And so we got good news though. We got good news because Jesus loves us still. Amen. He loves us first. He loves us more than the work and He loves us still. It doesn't matter where we are in this today we've come in. This is a place of good news. You know what the gospel means? It's the good news. It's the good news because there's good news for us that he's still coming after us. He wouldn't have written this church if it weren't the other way around. And what does he tell them to do to find that first love again? He says to remember those things from the beginning. Remember those things from the beginning. He tells them that they need to repent. Repent. This is something that's been preached down through the ages and down through time, but it's a message that still should have re relevance for us today and anybody on the internet. Repentance is precious. Repentance is necessary. If, he, if we're in that place where we find ourselves like this, even if we've loved the Lord for a long time, I believe there are many people in this church that they, in Ephesus, they truly meant well, but we find our place that we have to come and say, I, Lord, I repent. And Lord, help us not to think we've been at this so long that we don't need to apologize and do things like we did at the first. We can feel like we are too good for this. Anybody know what I'm saying? We're too good. I've done this too long. I don't have to do this. Oh, but we all have that place. that We, have, we come to that place that we need to have that love. And we have to have that repentance. And what he says here is keep that fire burning. Keep that relationship with me, he says here. And um, I encourage us with this. Let's get, a, let's get our boost and keep going. We have those times, and I pray that it'll be today. Today's a good day to get a boost from the Lord Jesus. That's why we're here in the house of God, to say, hey, if I need to come to the altar, I can get it. If I need to worship God, I can worship Him and commune with Him. We get that boost. And a lot of times what can happen for a Christian, I've seen it, and you may have too, we get an awesome time. You know, you get the evangelist that comes. Woo, every, everything's great. And it's good. We need it. We need those times. But then we go back and we, it ends up like it was before because we don't keep the fire burning. We don't keep that relationship stoked up because it's not just about falling out in the spirit or just about the emotion. We need, we, like we said, we need those things. But there to be a boost to keep us going and to keep us actually loving on Monday and Tuesday and beyond. We have to have that going with us. It's a continuation. The fire needs to keep burning. That's the things that all, I believe the church in Ephesus was doing at first. They had that walk with God that was daily. I, hey, I'm, I'm getting to know you daily. Um, 
you know, it was hard. You know, I talked about long distance with my wife. It's hard. If anybody's ever been in a long distance relationship, oh, it's tough. It's tough because you can't be with them every day, and it hurts. It hurts. And he's called us, hey, to say, hey, I want to be with you every day, not just on Sundays, not just when you feel like it, not just when things are going along and, and you happen. It's a daily thing. There is a certain sense of interrelationship, a discipline that has to come. And so I, I encourage us that we have that, those things in the, fir, in the first that just overflow with that passion to see. And that passion will overflow for us in our language too. Because truly one of the ways we show our love is by, yes, by what we say. You know what we say. We say those sweet things to the folks that we love. Amen. It's good to have that language that we have in communication with love. And you know what? That tends to spill out over to other people too. You know what? Those people that you work with, those people that you see on a regular basis or maybe even not on a regular basis. So often when we first get saved, does anybody remember that when you first got saved? I sure hope you do. I hope you remember when that first time was when you came to Jesus. So many times we get that enthusiasm. We just want to talk about what's happening because it's awesome what he's doing. But then sometimes that can fade down. That passion can fade. because the, and, and one of the tips we have, it's not that, we, that, that talking to him is, is, again, that first love, but it's a, a sign of it, if you will. It's a, it's a symptom of what God's doing in us. And sometimes we see those things like we're not doing the things we used to do. It's a symptom of what's going on. In here, does that make sense? And so, if we see those things beginning to flag and sag on us, sometimes it's a symptom. Hey, I need to check my first love. I need to check that love. Is Jesus that one I'm loving like I need to love? And if we look and we find that He's not, guess what? There's good news. He is still God, and He is still reaching out to love us. He is still the same God as He's always been. And so, I, I'm thankful for that. That there's an enthusiasm He can give to us. And so this is probably pretty simple today, but I, I'm reminded of this. Jesus was very, very um, firm in saying this, that those who seek him, they will find. They will find. If you seek him out, he will find him. And when you find him, you're not going to find uh, a mess. <laughs> you're not going to find something rough. There's the story my dad talks about, his principal he used to work with down at a Daryville school. He was a principal there. Uh, that many people knew far and wide. He was a character, one of those type of people. If you ever know those, that sometimes they kind of were just a little bit maybe sideways with the rules, but they got away with it because they'd been doing it for so long. And uh, he would, he, uh, the story goes, he had cafeteria workers at his school that he had. And for Christmas, they were kind of hoping for a good gift. And he, he, uh, he gave them a box and a gift one day, and they opened it up, and guess what it was? It was some cow manure he'd gotten out of the field right for them. So it's like, that's pretty rough, isn't it? <laughs> it was a little practical joke that he had going on there. And uh, sometimes we think of God like that. You know, we get, we get folks that we, you know, we, we, we know the history that we've had, and we think, hey, that's how God's going to be to us. But the Bible says something like this. If, he, if we ask for something good, He doesn't give us a stone. He doesn't give us a snake. He doesn't give us a big bunch of mess in a box. He gives good gifts to His children. And so my point is this. If we seek Him out, we realize we have needs. We all have needs in this place. We have some big needs in this place. And, I wanna, and, we, and this, this church as a whole has needs. We want to grow. We want to see people saved. We want to see the work happen. But I wanted to say this for us. As we seek Him, guess what He does? He takes care of the other. He takes care. We step into the. We will step into the work. This is not a. This is not a message to say we don't work. We do, but as we work, guess what He's going to do? He's going to. He's going to be working right there if we keep that relationship with Him. Keep that firm. He has good. He has something give, good to give to you. Just as a, as we as humans as people give good gifts, He has something good. If you're sick today, He's got a good gift for you. He is your love. He is your first love. If you are, if you are so discouraged, you wonder how you even got here or turned on the computer, He's got a good gift for you today. He loves you that much. He loves you that much. If we've come to that place where it seems like there's no hope for those that we love, oh, may we keep on loving Him. Sometimes we want to work and we want to dig in and do the things that we need to. Sometimes we just got to say, Lord, 
I got to sit at your feet a moment more. I got to come to you and talk to you and seek your face. I got to fast a little bit. When we say fast, we kind of push back the food for just a little bit. We come back because we love him. We do the things that we do because we love him, not because we have to or because it's the, the, the next thing that's screaming at us. We have those things that we, we do that because they're close to our hearts that we push away the one that's our first heart, our first love. And may we never do that. As much as, as much as we love our families, let me say this, because sometimes the first love ends up being people. Some, of some form or fashion ends up being people. He loves them more than you ever could. He loves that person that you love more than you ever could. And so do you believe, do we believe he can take care of them? He sure will. He sure will. What we got to do is take care of first things first and love him first. So I want to say this to us today. Don't sell him short today. He meets the needs. He, he is good to do, take care of all the work and all the other that's there, all the sin that's there. He's good to take care of it. But oh, he loves to be with you today. He loves to be that love with you today because he gave up all the splendor for you and me, for you and me. And so I encourage us as we call the, the folks back up here with the music. I encourage us today, we need to get the first love. We need to receive our first love back if we're not there. This message may not be for you. You may be doing great with this, but I can, you can bank, take it to the bank. Somebody in our lives is struggling with this. Someone that we care about is struggling with this first love. And today I just encourage us, may we make sure that that love is there. May we make sure that that love that, oh, I know Jesus, not just about Him, not just doing stuff for Him. I love Him. I love Him. And I want to encourage anybody that's listed, if we're not sure we're right, this is a good day to get that first love because there's nothing like being saved. Can somebody say amen to that? There's nothing like knowing Jesus. And if there's anybody out there, anybody here listed, that's not where they need to be with God and that love is not really there at all, then today's a good day to make it right. Today's a good day to make sure you're right with Jesus. And for every one of us otherwise, today's a good day to make sure that first love is there. Not of anything else, not of any substitutes. It seemed very, very close, but it's not Him. It's not Jesus. Today's a good day to seek that first love. And Father, I want to pray in the name of Jesus for anybody that doesn't know you, that they haven't encountered that love in the way that's real. Maybe they've been in church. Maybe they've had they prayed prayers different times, and but that love just really isn't there. That connection with you, that knowing you, that born again experience isn't there for them. And I pray that anyone that's listening to that today will have that before they turn that phone off or before they leave here today. Maybe that at some points in the past, it felt like maybe it was there, but it's pretty clear it's not right now. Today's a good day to make it right. And you're just not sure. Today's a good day to make it right. I just want to ask with heads bowed and eyes closed, and for those on the internet the same, if anybody just says, Nathan, would you agree with me? I just want to see that first love. I want to see that love of Jesus and know that I know that I know Him and I'm on my way to heaven. Give you slip up a hand. Is there anyone today? Maybe I've done this in the past, but I'm not sure today. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody on the internet that's just not sure, I pray this for you. Lord, that you show them through the Holy Spirit what I can't. That, Lord, you love them so much that you gave your very self that whosoever believes in you won't perish but have everlasting life. That that will be revealed and that, the Lord, there will be a confession of sins, a confession with their mouths that Jesus is Lord. And they will believe in their heart that God has raised them from the dead and they'll be saved. I pray that for each one that needs to receive that today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And for those that need to seek you, dear God, that that first love they know you. They've been changed by you. But that first love just isn't right quite there like it used to be. There used to be a time the fellowship with Jesus is sweet, but it's not there. I pray for that one today, that they find that place as soon as they can, 
where they can say, Lord, I want that first love back. I want to know you, not just your work, not just the things I've known in the past, but I want to know you. And we pray that in the precious, righteous, and holy name of Jesus that they find you today. And for each one that's struggling today with something else, they're sick, they're discouraged, there's, there seems no hope, they don't know which direction to turn, there's not a direction, I pray for them too, in Jesus' name, that they find everything, receive every good work that you have, because you love them that much, and we love you for it, in Jesus' name. And Father, we love you for it. For those on the internet, we'll stop here. We just pray God's blessings for you. Remember that first love. We'll see you soon at Christian.